Hello and uh, welcome to another video uh, and in this one uh, we are going to be looking at uh, grids uh, on images. Uh, so the first thing we obviously need is going to be an image so let's go into our assets uh, and then we'll go to data and we'll load this uh, image up here and we'll add it to our uh, campaign and then we'll zoom in a bit so that we can see our image. Uh, so we're talking about the uh, grids, so we want to uh, go to our grids tool um, and the first thing that you probably want to uh, realize is that on any image, um, on any Fantasy Grounds image that you open, there is a grid. It's hidden, you, you can't see it, but there will be a grid um, on this uh, map as it is. So even without actually um, showing the grid, you can still use the uh, map as a combat map and movement, etc. will all work. Um, if we have a look at the tools up here, the first tool that you see is this uh, grid visibility. And as you can see, it's defaulting to off. So if we click that, uh, we now can see that there is a grid there um, and it defaults to uh, 50 pixels by 50 pixels as you can see from these two boxes here. So the, there's already a grid on this map so really um, in many ways do we really need to do anything? Um, well yes the grid in this case uh, 50 pixels by 50 pixels is uh, very small. Uh, this is going to make this say, tent here, for example, in this bad knit camp, uh, something like 60 feet across. And, you know, this table is going to be uh, somewhere in the region of about 15 feet across. So these are probably uh, too big um, or the, the grid is too small for that. Um, so <clears throat> we want to change the size of the grid. And the easiest way to do it in a map like this is just to uh, click on the uh, box here for the uh, uh, width uh, and just type a number. So I think probably um, 200 is probably a bit better for this. So we just type 200, uh, press return. Uh, you'll see that the uh, height and width have both gone to 200. Uh, this is because we've got the aspect lock on, uh, which means that uh, whatever we type into either of these boxes, the other box will change to the same value. Basically, it gives you a perfect square. Um, so we can see now that our grid is uh, 200. This gives us a bit more uh, realism here in terms of the size of these uh, assets uh, in the, uh, on the map. Um, and so we're happy with this uh, grid. Um, now, there's several other things you can do at this stage. Uh, the first being that you may not want the grid to be so noticeable. I mean, obviously you can then just toggle the visibility back off and it'll be in completely invisible. But if you want to have some visibility of the grid, then we can go to our color picker here. And down the bottom here, you can see we have a, a, a channel here called A, which is the alpha channel. And if we turn that down, if we drag this uh, indicator here down to the left, then you can see that the grid is gradually uh, getting fainter and fainter. Uh, and so we've got it to the stage now where we can just about see the grid. It's just about visible, but it's not um, uh, to the detriment of the underlying graphic. Um, you can also uh, change the color of the grid uh, as well if you want a yellow grid or if you wanted a purple grid uh, or any color that you like. You can just uh, click on the uh, indicators up here and you can make the grid uh, anything you like. You can also use the color picker here if we click on this and then just mouse over until we come over a, an area that we want to have the grid and you can see that the color is changing as we mouse over the map and once we've decided this is it we just click and the uh, grid will change to that color and then of course you can then uh, go and make the uh, alpha uh, greater or less as well. Um, so that's a fairly uh, simple example. Um, so let's look at uh, another map. Let's go to our assets uh, data and we'll uh, load up this one here. Um, and if we uh, once we kind of zoom into this one, we can see that uh, actually there's already a grid on, on this map. The artist has uh, 
decided to incorporate a grid into the map and so it's baked into the uh, image. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that, we can't get rid of that, um, but what we uh, have to do or what we want to do is to make sure that our fantasy grounds grid is going to be the same as the grid on the map. So if we go to our grids tool and switch our grid on, uh, we can see that we have not been lucky here in that the grid size on the map is bigger than the standard 50 pixels. We've got our 50 pixel uh, fantasy grounds grid here, um, but if we look at the uh, map, we've got a much bigger grid. Uh, so we're going to have to adjust our fantasy grounds grid to uh, uh, merge in with the grid uh, on the map. So the easiest way to do that is uh, to start off with setting uh, this uh, icon here, uh, set, grid, uh, set Grid with Mouse. So we click on that and that now means that we can draw a grid with our uh, mouse. So we've got a little uh, sort of pointer here, so we're going to just set that somewhere close to an intersection in the grid. Uh, hold the left mouse button down and then drag out until we get somewhere close to where we think the grid uh, should be. And we can see that this has given us a pixel size of uh, 72. Um, now if we zoom in a bit, we can see that this is actually still slightly uh, too big. Um, we have got, uh, it's, it's not lining up here left and right. We can try and uh, align that using the adjust position tool here. Um, if we if we uh, mouse over that, we can see we can nudge right. If we mouse over the uh, little arrow to the side there, it's nudged right by 0.1. So the nudge right or up or down or whatever nudges uh, the grid by one pixel. And if you click on the little tiny arrow, then it nudges it by uh, a tenth of a pixel. So let's nudge right. And that actually lines it up a little bit better, but it's still uh, too big. We can see that our grid that we have drawn um, is still outside the line of the uh, grid on the actual map. So uh, what we want to do here is to change the number here. And this is uh, where you just have to kind of uh, do some guesswork. So at the moment, our fantasy grounds grid is, is too big. We've got it at 72 pixels. So let's try, first of all, 71. And we just need to type 71 into the first box here, and it'll automatically add that into the second box, as we saw earlier. This gives us a smaller grid. Uh, we can use our nudge buttons to nudge a little bit to the right, a little bit to the down, and that square now pretty much uh, covers the grid on the map. Um, but if we zoom into another area, we'll see that actually the grid is still not perfectly aligning with the uh, underlying uh, grid on the map. So we're going to have to uh, reduce that slightly. Um, now you can do the, in here we don't necessarily need just uh, whole numbers. We, we, it will accept decimals as well. So we just want a little bit less. So let's try 70.9. Um, the grid will jump, as you can see. We now have to go back into our uh, nudging here and we'll nudge over a few pixels. We'll nudge up a few pixels uh, over again. Um, and we can see that that's still not just uh, quite right. Um, so actually, uh, I think I made a mistake there. Instead of uh, reducing it to 70.1, I added it to 71.9. So let's try 70.9 this time. Uh, uh, let's try that again because it hasn't. Oh my goodness me. Right, delete all that. And uh, let's try 70.9. Um, now let's uh, realign this with our nudge. Uh, and nudge a little bit left, uh, and that looks pretty good. So let's zoom out, zoom into another area, and yeah, we've uh, got it uh, at 70.9. So that's the grid size that we want uh, for this map here. Uh, the uh, overlying or the the baked-in grid is now being overlaid by the Fantasy Grounds grid, 
perfectly aligned. Of course, you can then switch this off if you like, because the, the, the grid's already on in the map if, if, if you want to use that. Um, but the grid is perfectly aligned still, and all of these will be uh, correct. Or uh, if you wanted to, you can go into the color picker and uh, reduce the uh, alpha channel so that the, the fantasy grounds grid is less noticeable. Uh, you can change the color, etc., as we saw in the uh, previous section. Okay, so these uh, add square grids. So let's have a, a quick look at the uh, hexagon grids. Uh, so that will require us to go back into uh, assets and data and we'll uh, create an image record for this map here. Um, uh, we'll make it a little bit bigger um, and uh, when we uh, get in here we can see uh, once we zoom way in that there is a very faint hexagon uh, grid on this uh, map. So again we want to uh, replicate this uh, with our fantasy grounds grid. Uh, if we go into our grid tool um, and switch our grid on, we can see that we've got the standard uh, 50 pixel grid, uh, which is not really what we want. So in the grid type drop down here, we can drop this, uh, click on the drop down. Uh, we've got uh, this type of grid here, which is the isometric grid. And we have two types of hexagon. We've got uh, this one here, which has got the flat sides, top and bottom. Uh, and we've got this one here, which has got the pointy side, uh, top and bottom. Now, I'm sure that there's um, special names for these. I don't know what they are uh, or what it uh, means. But anyway, this is the one that we want for this. Um, so our standard 50 pixel grid here is actually not too bad. It's not too far away from uh, where it is. Um, but uh, we're obviously going to have to resize the fantasy grounds grid. Uh, to uh, get it to line up with the, the grid on the map. Um, so let's try uh, 55 pixels first. Um, and that's actually not too bad. Um, but uh, as we move around the map, we can see that it's not just quite uh, uh, right. Um, so uh, I think referring to my notes here, I worked out eventually that the 54.7 uh, was the correct uh, grid size for this one. And if we have a look now at various portions of the map, we can see that that is pretty much uh, exactly what it is. So really what you want to do is just to play about uh, with these. Again, we could have, um, in this case, we could have drawn a grid with the mouse to try and get it sort of uh, reasonably accurate in the first instance. Um, but sometimes it's just as easy to uh, change the, the numbers in the size box rather than uh, using the mouse. If it's very close uh, when it starts, then just use the numbers to uh, nudge it about a bit. Uh, and if it's uh, way out, then use the mouse to draw a, a closer uh, grid. Now, there's just a couple of other things that we want to look at here. And this is, uh, we've ignored this up to now, the distance multiplier uh, and the distance suffix. Um, now, this uh, the distance multiplier here uh, defaults to 5. So that means if we were to draw a, a an arrow on this uh, grid, it's uh, 10 feet uh, or it, uh, it's... Okay, yeah, this is this footery. Yeah, if we go this way, so it's five feet from the center of one of these uh, hexes to the center of the other hex. So obviously that's not what we want for an overland map. Um, so what you can do here is you can change the distance multiplier to whatever you want, so that uh, each of these uh, grid squares or the grid hexagons uh, is that particular uh, value. And then you can also change the distance suffix. So if we wanted to leave the um, multiplier here to five, but uh, decided that instead of feet, uh, this is miles. So we can change the um, uh, the mark there uh, to uh, ML. And then we go back to draw a line again. We can see that the uh, suffix has changed and we're now showing uh, five miles rather than uh, five feet, which is a much more reasonable thing uh, for an overland map. And again, of course, in this case, 
um, we can uh, hide the uh, grid altogether if we wanted to. We can change the color of the grid uh, if we want to. We can change the uh, alpha channel, make the grid uh, less visible if we want to. We can do all of these uh, things with the hex grids in the same way as we could do it with the square grids. Um, okay, I think that's it for uh, grids. I uh, hope that was useful. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Uh, cheers for now.